Okay, so now that we're done with the different parameters that affects the distribution of life on Earth, we'll now move on to how does it really look like, no? the distribution of life on Earth, the different biogeographic regions of the world in terms of your organism distribution. So, but before we go to that, we'll first recognize the different effort of naturalists back then to somehow create or map or delineate these regions of the world with certain distinct species in them. So first is the zoological boundaries in the region that Alfred Russell Wallace has created. So Alfred Russell's version of this zoological boundaries and regions were more or less specific to animals, no? Because animals were supposed to be specifically adapted adapted to live in certain zones or under certain physical conditions. His focus was on the zoological regions and the most natural primary divisions of the earth with regards to the forms of animals, animal life on earth. So geographers back then determined the or, or delineated the regions of, of zoological regions by means of your climate and certain continents, no? by delineating certain continents with the use of your isothermal lines and your parallels of your longitudes, you know, the Tropic of Cancer. Because different latitudes would mean different temperature too. That is a primary factor for your distribution of life, as we have mentioned earlier. But the main principle of why Wallace has come to the conclusion of doing the zoological region was, well, Alfred Wallace, first of all, have acknowledged the fact that all of this zoological division that he created was, of course, not close to a perfect division, no? Because a zoological division of the Earth in the first place, no, delineating this division would be nearly impossible, no? Because the causes that have led to the present distribution of animal and life are so varied. Their actions and reactions, the different complexities have been so weird and complex that anomalies and irregularities are sure to exist between these different regions, which is why there are different discrepancies in these uh, boundaries that they have delineated back then. But it's actually okay, no? Because one, you just need to have to assume that the several regions that you have created are not of equal rank, and two, that they are not equally applicable to all classes of animals. But more or less, all of this boundaries coincided to the in, in general sense no coincided to the distribution of animal species that they have observed different families of animals so i would like you to look at this at this map this is the proto no? or the primary map or boundaries that Alfred wallace has created and as you can see here there are at least six different zoological regions there are six zoological regions because wallace have based this on mr scatler's regions no before and we have the first one which is the Palearctic region including europe the temperate asia north africa and atlas mountains we have number two the ethiopian regions which includes uh south africa well which includes Africa, south of the Atlas, and Madagascar, and the Mascarene Islands, with the inclusion of Southern Arabia. And then we also have number three, the Indian region, including India, the south of Himalaya, to South China, and Borneo, and Java. So yeah, right here. Paganon siya. Okay? And number four, we have the most distinct of them all, the Australian region, including uh well certain parts of celebes lombok lombok strait uh, eastward to australia and some of the pacific islands no some of the pacific islands right here like fiji and all those micronesian islands in oceania yes and then we have number five the nearctic region including greenland so right here nearctic region including greenland and north america and north of mexico but not the not including the south of Mexico, because that would be included in your neotropical region. No? The south of Mexico, including the most of the entire South America, the Antillean region right here, no? now Puerto Rico and 
all the countries, the Antillean regions. So in total, we have a six, no? Before, Wallace uh, divided the world into six faunal regions or zoological regions. The Paleartic, the Ethiopian, the Indian, or much, much appropriate Oriental, the Australian region, the Neotropical, the Nearctic regions. Okay, so that's that. But we also have, after your maps or delineation of Alfred Russell Wallace, we also have the delineation, the updated delineation of Roy E. Dickerson. Well, it's not a very updated uh, description or delineation, but I want you to look at this because he also used the different uh, regions back then. But he recognized the presence of your three realms no, of zoologic division. Still, no? so we have the Neogaic, Neogaic, we have Arctogaic and Notogaic realms. And in that realms, we have your different regions, including different regions. So we have the Neotropical, the Ethiopian, the Oriental, the Holo-Arctic, the Sonoran regions. And for the Notogaic, we have your Polynesian, Hawaiian, and Australian regions. So that's the scheme of zoologic division by Roy E. Dickerson in his book, no? Distribution of Life in the Philippines. So for Roy E. Dickerson, some of the boundaries of the biologic division, well, he based it more or less on the zoological or the animal life that is present. Most of it are decidedly indefinite, just like well, he agree with, with Wallace, no? that all of these are only a generalized view, but it's not a totally well it is not far from perfect and there are actually discrepancies in the in your delineations because there are certain transition zones actually and the philippines are actually in the wallacea in the transition zone where we are clearly not a distinct boundary between the asiatic and the australian um fauna we are a transition of both okay so he points out that the various regions are exceedingly distinct, with the Australian region being the most distinct of all the realms in, or all of the regions in the world. It, ha it contains the very distinct marsupial mammal lineages and eucalyptus trees. You know? But it is important to notice that this uh, great geographical separation does not necessarily indicate a great separation, separation in the biologic regions of the Earth. I would like you to internalize this because there are boundaries, but it doesn't mean that organisms can't move from these boundaries. That's why there are transition zones, actually, where different organisms from different realms are meet. I'd like you to look at it in a more or less dynamic pace, that these different biogeographical regions are still and up to this point are equilibrating okay do you get that that's a, quite a good analogy of what's happening in the academic discourses both now and back then the good thing now is that we are in the most acceptable or we have high number no considerably high before then compared then high number of taxonomic uh, researchers. So yep, this is the boundary or the different regions that he have created or mapped. The Neotropical region, Ethiopian, more or less the same, no Holo Arctic, the Oriental region, and the Australian region are the major regions. So this is a classic map back then, which always uses a North Polar projections. And it has a continuity, kasi, it can show continuity of your land masses. Okay, so we go now to the recent biogeographic region. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng, what do we mean when we say biogeographic regions? No? When we say biogeographic regions, we pertain to the certain area of both animal and plants no? and their distribution. No? So it's an area where your animal and plant distribution has a certain degree of shared similarities and shared characteristics all throughout that area. These geographic regions have similar environmental conditions that are capable of harboring the same type of biota. This situation effectively separates the biosphere, no, the earth, into biomes or the, the ecological communities 
that have the same climatic conditions and geological features that support species of similar life strategies and adaptations. When we say biome, no, it is the fundamental unit of which a larger biogeographic region, i.e. the floral kingdoms and faunal realms, is consisted. No? For example, the tropical forest is one type of a terrestrial biome. It is located in various points around the planet where climatic and ge geologic conditions produce similar environments. Okay? However, the individual species will not be the same from one tropical forest to another. Instead, each forest will support organisms that are ecologically, more or less ecologically equivalent. Okay? So the important thing here is how in the mapping of your geographic regions, biogeographic regions, is how the unique distribution of these animal and plants in these various biomes are purely affected by the present climatic factors, the isothermic maps, the latitudinal zonation, and also the geologic events which includes some concepts from lecture 2 like continental drift and past climatic conditions. So this approach in the mapping of your biogeographic region is actually what we call the historical biogeography, which pertains to the study of the distribution of flora and fauna throughout the world. So for the distribution boundaries of flora and fauna, we have for the case of your flora, we have the kingdoms, boreal, paleotropical, neotropical, South Africa, Australia, and Antarctic. And for the case of your animals, your fauna, we have the realms naman. We have the holoarctic, paleotropical, notogean, neogean, and the Antarctic realm again. Sometimes these biogeographical regions that were mentioned earlier are always somehow interchangeably related to biome, the major life zones that there is. These different biomes are named for their dominant type of vegetation. Though. The tropical rainforest, the taiga, the tundra. So for the mapping of this biome, you always have to consider different processes, no? different factors that make such distribution possible of today. No? different factors that affect, for example, your dispersals of your organism and vicariants no? or separation through islands and geographical barriers like the presence of your seas or the presence of your landmass. No? And there are also the concept of endemism followed by the components of species diversity, the species richness, the relative abundance, and also the species adaptation to ecological habitats and your geological changes that affects your biotic distribution. So all of those factors are used in the mapping of the distribution of your flora and fauna in the world. So bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba ganito? Why are we using this different biogeographical classification? Well, first of all, when we do delineate certain areas of the world, it is more or less a means to understand the causative factors involved in evolution, whether they, they be the vicissitudes of geologic events or the dynamics of biological adaptation. In the sense, a classification no, is not right and wrong as long as it is useful. Kasi utilitarian tayo. No? So this effort of us, no? until today, before and now, this effort of sorting animals and plants into major biogeographic regions is a useful hypothesis-generating activity. Because when two taxa of organisms show similar variation in distribution, it would mean that they have been subjected to the same kind of evolutionary processes, such as different ecological constraints that favor certain adaptation or random geographical changes. So this would be for the case of your marsupial and placentals, this is always a case of your convergent evolution. For example, your we have your squirrel, no? Um, a Euterian mama, your squirrel, your flying squirrel that is native to parts of North America and British Columbia. And we have your sugar glider native to Australia. If you look at them, they look the same. They're, they're weird, no? Weirdly the same, but they are located on different parts of the globe. And they are not even... A close relative of each other. The first one, the flying squirrel in America, North America, is a uterian mammal, a placental mammal. And your flying or your sugar glider on Australia is a 
marsupial. But if you look at them, they look the same because they are a product of convergent evolution because there is this certain kinds of evolutionary pressures, same processes, same ecological constraint that made them adapt or look that way. No? So the thing with convergent evolution basically is that animals that are living in the same ecosystem, same biome, would have similar lifestyles, similar food source, similar nocturnal lifestyle, many similar characteristics of their environment. That's why they would end up having the same similar physical traits. That's the thing about your convergent evolution. That's why most of these placentals and marsupial mammals look exactly the same no? or more or less the same because of their habit in their regions. But they are different from each other. So this is a prime example of convergent evolution. So yep, we'll move on to the Earth's floral region. So, so there are exactly six floral kingdoms, including the boreal, boreal or holoarctic, the paleotropical, the neotropical, the South African or capensic, the Australian, and lastly, the Antarctic. So these are commonly distinguished, no? Floral king, six floral kingdoms. These kingdoms are not sharply delineated, of course, and the families of higher plants vary in degree in which they are found no? across the phytogeographic kingdoms. But with their distribution being only part dependent on the age. So your boreal kingdom, the holoarctic, so the green one right here, the holoarctic kingdom is actually a pretty interesting kingdom. It consists of your Eurasia and North America which essentially have been contiguous mass ever since no? the Eocene epoch. And the narrow Bering Strait have been between Siberia and Alaska. No? The strait here, right here, is actually, I, I mean here, here pala. So here, nasa edge siya kasi. But the strait here is actually continuous back then, no? du during Ice Age time, during Pleistocene. That's why there is no surprise that there are that the difference between the flora of these two continents are more or less small. No? Families such as Betulaceae, Birch tree, Brassicaceae, or your cabbage cabbage, cruciferae, primulaceae, primrose, saxi, fragaceae, your strawberries, your rose, rosaceae, ran, your ranunculaceae, buttercup, apiaceae, or the um, Ambilifrae are spread across the temperate zone of your northern hemisphere because this uh, region is more or less a contin contiguous landmass back then, specifically on the Beringia right here, the land bridge right here before that existed. Okay, so that's the Boreal Kingdom. We'll now move on to the Paleotropical Kingdom. So the Paleotropical Kingdom is this cool I. Uh, this color uh, yellow. So Paleotropical Kingdom, uh, well, this kingdom extends from Africa, including strips among the northern and southern edges throughout the Arabian Peninsula. So the Arabian Peninsula right here. And of course, including India, South Asia, eastward to the Pacific. So India, South Asia. So plant families that extend over much of this region include families of your Pandanaceae, the screw pine, Pandanus, uh, Nepenthaceae is Indian pitcher plant. Uh, well, the flora in this huge region, however, is not homogeneous. 98% no? of species of Hawaiian flora are endemics, and 70% of Fijian floral species, and 60% of the floral species of New Caledonia are, well, endemic. No? So, it, especially the Polynesian and the Hawaiian region, a separate, separate region but are part of your kingdom. Paleotropical kingdom include the Malaysian, no? that's different from the Indo-African kingdom, the Indo-African kingdom. That's also different, sub-kingdom, I mean, different from the Polynesian sub-kingdom, okay? So, Malaysian. Malaysian is different from Melanesian and different from Micronesian. 
and different from Polynesia. <laughs> okay? So Malaysia, Malay region, Micronesia, the island groups in Oceania. Melanesia would pertain to Papua New Guinea, more or less a Papuan part. So yeah, that's that. Okay? Next would be Neotropical, the Neotropical Kingdom, right here, color pink. So your Neotropical Kingdom uh, covers all but the extreme southern tip and southwestern tip of South America. Right here, okay? So it includes Central America, the Central America, including Mexico, except for the dry northern center of Mexico. And it also includes the southern tip of so the neotropical region is actually pretty cool. It has vegetation ranges from tropical rainforest in the Amazon and to open savanna in Venezuela and Argentina. No? So 47 families and nearly 3,000 genera of flowering plants are endemic to this kingdom. Some families including Bromeliaceae, pineapple, pineapple family, the Cactaceae, cactus family are virtually confined in this region of your Neotropical Kingdom, okay? So, and then we'll have the next one, the Kapensik or the South African Kingdom. So, this Kapensik Kingdom consists of the southern and western tip of Africa, the area around the Cape of Good Hope from your movies, no? Right here. <laughs> right there, okay? So, that's the Kapensik Kingdom. It is remarkably, well, rich in plants with 11 families and 500 genera. All are endemic to the region. Well, this is uh, among of them, among all of these regions, the smallest, no? Phytogeographic kingdom in the world. And there is a certain general aspect of the vegetation, no? Akin to a scrubland vegetation of that region. It's actually a pretty cool kingdom too. Now we'll have the Australian Kingdom right here, which is, of course, in the continent of Australia, which forms a sharply distinct from the paleotropic, this paleotropic yellow part. No? It's a pretty different kingdom with rainforest biomes from tropical in the north that includes monsoon forest to do temperate in the far south, especially in Tasmania. And for the case of Australian Kingdom, we have woodlands of eucalyptus, and there are a lot of studies of the distribution of eucalyptus plant in here, eucalyptus cover in the eastern third of, third of the continent, and a mosaic temperate forest. No? So a few species of eucalyptus in eastern New Guinea, New Britain, and the lesser Sundaland, and the Philippines actually. That's why we always say there is a transition zone right here, because certain species have been going in and out or certain species have been traversing this region too. So yeah, that's the Australian Kingdom. And finally, for the floral, the last one is the Antarctic Kingdom right here. That would include the southern tip of your South America, including the Chilean coast right here and New Zealand right here. And of course, the Antarctic and subantarctic islands. No, so there's not much of species richness here, but there are five genera, fifty genera that are common to this kingdom. Okay, so that's the Earth's floral regions. We'll also have the Earth's faunal realms or the major regions in terms of animal diversity, animal life. Okay, so the faunal diversity is. Well, this is also based on the once mentioned Mr. Scatler in 1858 that was the basis for the work of Alfred Russell Wallace. So it's the same, no? So because Alfred Wallace set the parameters, the determining factors for these zoogeographic regions or realms, no? Although there are different species with different dispersal abilities, even birds and insects, distribution can be accounted for by these traditional geographic, zoogeographic boundaries that Russell Wallace and Scatler, Mr. Scatler, have been proposing back then. So we'll talk about them in general, but 
for you guys, you need to notice that there are certain exceptions to the rules, certain um, discrepancies, no? So, like for example, your subtraction transition zone in the Walasiya, or Walasii, which includes the Philippines, Celebes, and the Molucas, and the Lesser Sunda, Sunda Island, no? Sunda Land, I mean. <clears throat> so, in this region, the Walasii region, there is a transition kasi between your paleotropical and Australian realms or your Asiatic species and the Australian species. No? Although, there is high endemicity in this area too. So that's the weird thing about this region. Okay, so moving on to the discussion, we have first the, the biggest holo-arctic realm. So... The Holo-Arctic realm is usually divided on the basis of terrestrial organism into two regions. We have the Arctic region of the North America. So we have the Nearctic region of North America. And we also have the Palearctic region of the Eurasia and North Africa. So right here. So Eurasia and North Africa. Right here. So unlike North American, unlike the floral phytogeographic regions, no? the Nearctic region, zoogeographic region, extend from south, that would include Florida then, and the California, no? Baja California. And it's important that to note that your faunal realm doesn't necessarily equate to the floral kingdoms that was mentioned earlier. Okay? Among the families, the Characters of these realms are the mammals such as Talpidae, the moles, Castoridae, the beavers, the Ocotonidae, the picas, the amphibians such as three families of salamanders, Salamandridae, Cryptobranchidae, Protidae, so, and invertebrates such as freshwater crayfish family Astacidae. So those are the organisms, uh, the animals uh, family that are found commonly in this region. Next, we have the paleotropical Afro-Tetian region. When we say, that's why it says Tetian, it is more or less inferring to the Tetis Sea back then in the Pangea. No? No? This, this Tetian region was, well, close to the Tetis Sea back then during the breakup of Pangea, no? created, <clears throat> as you have remembered, the Tetis Sea. So, your paleotropical or Afrotetian realm is clearly divided into two regions, which are sometimes regarded as separate realm. realm. We have the Afrotropical Ethiopian region. So, this includes the continental Africa, south of the Sahara, and the southern Arabia, southwestern Arab nation. So, right here. Okay? <coughs> we also have the Oriental region which includes the tropical southern and southeastern asia including associated continental islands so there are two weirdly regions here no we have the madagascan regions no madagascar and the wallacee region so we have the weird region here and the wallacee that the philippines is part of no these are different weird regions because they are more or less distinct regions from this um, paleotropical realm. No? But they are part of it, of course. So, being in continuous geographic contact, the paleotropical and the holoarctic realm merge into one another. But nevertheless, there are distinct elements in part, but not entirely because of the different climates. So there are different mammalian order, orders, including polydota, pangolins. We have your elephants, and endemic to the paleotropical regions. We have different mammalian families too that are confined to and extend ac extended across the realm, including the old world monkeys, the lorises, the bush babies, the angwantibo, the poto, and the old world porcupines too. No? The hystericidae, the civets, the mangoes, the rhinos, the chevrotains, no? 
and also different endemic avian families here. We have the hornbill, the pitas, the old world chameleons are also found in this region, the paleotropical realm, with specifically pertaining to the afrotropical, Ethiopian, the oriental, the Wallacean, and the Madagascan region. Next, we have the Notogian realm, which is also known as the Australian realm. It begins east of the Lydicar line. So, yep. So, we have Lydicar lines right here. So, the east of the Lydicar line by Lydicar extends into the Pacific Ocean. It consists of four regions, essentially, your Not Notogian realm. We have the Australian, the Oceanic, New Zealand, and Hawaiian region. So, Australia, Oceanic, New Zealand, and Hawaii. The fauna of this Pacific island, however, have much in common with the paleotropical fauna in the Australian proper. No? And then there are also endemic to the region, including monotremes, the egg-laying mammals, such as the platypus, as we have <coughs> seen, like Perry, the platypus, and for other six order of marsupials. No? There are many marsupials here. We have different families of birds too and some fishes. No? So, yep, that's the Notogian realm. Second to the last is the Neogean realm or the Neotropical realm right here. So, your Neotropical realm or the Neogean extend from the tropical lowlands of Mexico right here through Central America right here, the Central America. So, from lowlands of Mexico through Central America into South America as far as the temperate sub-Arctic portion, no? sub-Antarctic zones. <clears throat> so there are many endemic mammal groups in here, including some order of marsupial and several placental orders too, like Endata and Dentata, which are, well, several extinct orders. <clears throat> Well, by the Oligocene period, the New World monkeys, the New World monkeys are present in these <coughs> regions, including some group of rodents that have entered South America. There are also some fish and invertebrate taxa that is endemic to the region too. So that's your Neogean realm. You can also find some flightless bird and lungfish and some bony fish fam families and and Chiclidae too, that are notable here in this region. And we have the last one. So we have the Antarctic realm, or also known as the Archenotic realm. So this realm encompasses the Antarctic continent, the sub-Antarctic islands, and the elements of the southwestern New Zealand. Well, the existence of this realm, or rather its ghost, is justified by the common occurrence in New Zealand and South America. No? The, for example, the presence of certain stonefish and certain crustaceans and freshwater snails have made this a considerable realm to be considered. We have <coughs> certain marsupial family too that could have been found in this region that is confined to Chile, Chile and most of the Australian marsupial in the south, well, in the portion of New Zealand. Okay, so some relic Antarctic connection.